Welcome back. In this lecture, I will introduce Gibbs face rule. It's more like an advertisement uh, because we have not defined the underlying concepts behind Gibbs face rule. We need to know more about how do we think about thermodynamic equilibrium, what thermodynamic variables are useful for in characterizing thermodynamic equilibrium. But I'll just mention a formula that is still of certain utility at this stage of the, of the course. So what is that we are looking at? So we're looking at um, a system that has only one component undergoing uh, phase transitions uh, as you change, uh, let's say pressure and temperature. So we've already looked at this phase diagram and there are some distinct features. Uh, I can emphasize that briefly. Uh, so if there are two phases, let's say liquid and vapor, which have the same symmetry, uh, this in the PT phase space, this line ends in a critical point. Whereas when you have, let's say solid and uh, liquid, they have different symmetry, this line continues. All uh, you can go keep going. The same here, okay? Um, that's one of the points. So you can go from liquid to vapor in two ways. You can go as what is what is called a continuous phase transition uh, in this manner or in this manner. Um, or there's a very different way of getting from liquid to vapor by cutting across this line. So let's say you keep a pressure a constant and then when you cut across this line, it looks like a single point. You're cutting across a single point, but if you actually see what is happening in P specific volume uh, diagram, what you're, when you cut across this line, you are going through this entire region, right? When you fix the pressure, it automatically fixes the temperature, but uh, the you start from saturated liquid, uh, the, the ratio of vapor to liquid keeps on increasing and till to the point where you have only vapor, right? And then you can also think uh, of similar process uh, from a single phase to two phase region to back to single phase uh, when you phase transform at a constant temperature. Again, as soon as you fix the temperature, it automatically fixes the pressure. So there is a pattern to observe here. So in the single phase region, let it be solid, uh, liquid or vapor. When you fix the pressure, you can change the temperature without changing the phase, All right? So, but that's not so when you have uh, more than one phase, okay? So all these things is compactly represented by a rule uh, whose derivation I'm not providing here. We need to address a few more things before we can get to that, maybe towards the end of the course. Uh, but this formula is a useful bookkeeping device as of now, okay? So it's good to for you to know the formula. It's called the Gibbs phase rule. So it connects three things, F, C, and P. I will clarify what they are. F, you call it, call F as the degree of freedom. I'll elaborate. C is the number of component. For example, this is a single component system. It, it can be water or some other thing. If it's water, this is the uh, solid to liquid line, phase transition line. For most of the normal uh, substances, uh, this would be the line, right? Phases, whether it's for a single phase system, it P is equal to one. Uh, in Along this line, P is equal to two. There are two phases involved at equilibrium. Uh, at the triple point, there are three phases in equilibrium with each other, thermodynamic equilibrium with each other, okay? So that is the definition of C and P. F is more complex. That is the number of independent intensive variables that have to be specified to fix the state of the system, 
All right. So when you say intensive variables, it looks like there are three choice, uh, P, T, and specific volume, okay? So not all the three intensive variables have the same status. I've also mentioned this in a previous lecture. P and T uh, can be coupled with the conjugate variable to give uh, some form of energy. P can be coupled, it's an intensive variable. It can be coupled with the conjugate extensive variable volume to give energy. A T can be coupled with, as uh, an intensive variable, can be coupled with a conjugate extensive variable called entropy to give some form of energy. Um, uh, intensive variable uh, specific volume does, doesn't uh, behave in that manner. In addition, uh, in, especially in the two-phase region, uh, specific, just specifying specific volume uh, doesn't really help you much because uh, when to specify the state of the system, because when you are here, for example, you really don't know how much, what is the ratio of uh, vapor to uh, liquid uh, in the two-phase region. Uh, okay, that information is not provided. So when you when you're here, what is what you actually know is the density of uh, the liquid and the density of the relevant vapor. Okay, so it's just um, average quantity. So that's not, it's not, when we are talking about the intensive variable here, we are only referring to P and T uh, and not to a specific volume in the two-phase region, okay. But in the single-phase region, uh, specific volume is all right. Okay, so let us apply this rule. Okay, so without deriving it any further, let's see uh, what, uh, when you apply this rule, what happens. So in the single-phase region, uh, F, is C is equal to one, phase P is equal to one because it's a single phase region plus two, uh, you get two, okay? So you have to specify two intensive variables to specify the state of the system. So if you fix P uh, in this, for example, if you're in a solid phase, you can have any amount of T, you are still in a solid phase, you are not able to specify the state of the system. But as soon as you specify P and T, the state is well-defined. Uh, okay, so same thing with um, uh, P and uh, specific volume two. Okay, if you are in the single phase region, it's applicable to solid phase, the single phase liquid, single phase vapor, right? So that's why you, in this formula gives you the degree of freedom to be two. In the two phase region, for example, if you're in the coexistence line between liquid and vapor phase uh, coexistence line, you have F is that's what you want to compute. Uh, C is one because it's a one component system. Phase uh, P is two because the number of phases is two. And when you substitute this, uh, F is equal to one. What, what exactly do you mean by that? So as you can see here, as soon as you specify P, T is automatically specified. The system in a way chooses uh, T, right? So if you're in this P, the system in a way chooses T, okay? So uh, you cannot have, uh, for this P, you cannot have more than one T, right? So uh, uh, for this uh, P, you cannot have some other, uh, if this is, if you state this as P2, you have to be at T2. You cannot have some other uh, temperature. That's what you mean by degree of freedom uh, being one. So it need not be P, right? If you can specify temperature, the pressure is fixed, okay, the other way. Okay, so either you specify P, which fixes T, or you specify T, which fixes P. So let us, uh, it gets more interesting when you go to uh, a three-phase region. So there's only, uh, there's a two-phase region is a line, right? Uh, One-phase region is like an area plane here, but two-phase region in the PT diagram is a line and three-phase region is a point. So here uh, C is one, one component system. P is three because there are three phases. So what is the degree of freedom? When you put, plug in these values, the degrees of freedom, degree of freedom is zero. That means what? 
for this system let's say it's water uh, you if you want to have three phase coexistence you really do not have any choice the p and t uh, is uh, fixed for the system you cannot really control p and t okay so in this case for example the two phase region when you say you can uh, if you change the pressure the saturation pressure the saturation temperature may change and if you or if you have fixed the saturation temperature you can saturation pressure may change but in for three phase coexistence uh, at the critical point uh, the triple point sorry uh, you really do not have a choice if you fix water uh, nothing uh, is under your control both the critic triple temperature triple point pressure and triple point pressure is fixed for that particular um, system okay for that particular chemical system we looked at it uh, looked at this quantity for carbon dioxide right we uh, we elaborated why carbon dioxide is uh, used as dry ice right because triple point is above the ambient uh, pressure so when you are using it as ice the ambient pressure temperature is very low so you should you don't it's not a surprise that the triple point temperature is uh, much above it's uh, the system's triple point temperature but what is interesting about carbon dioxide is the triple point pressure is above uh, the ambient atmospheric pressure right so once you fix uh, let's say carbon dioxide water uh, nothing is under control it is the distinct feature of uh, the system uh, to have its own triple point temperature and triple point uh, pressure so that so this uh, has a very fundamental thermodynamic basis which we have not derived but it's a useful formula for you to remember even at this stage even without knowing the uh, source of this derivation with that i will stop this lecture thank you